So welcome to my Hampton Bay patio heater review and step-by-step -step assembly guide. I'm going to show you how to put this thing together from start to finish, what tools it comes with, what extra tools you'll need, and a few helpful hints along the way to show you how just one person can put this together on their own. And if you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Anyway, keep watching, see how we got here. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to put together the Hampton Bay outdoor gas patio heater. This thing kicks out 48,000 BTUs, one year warranty included. Anyway, let me cut the box open, see what tools we need and see how easy it is to assemble. One person can lift a box with moderate strength on there. It's not the lightest of things, it's not the heaviest of things either. Certainly doesn't necessarily need two people to lift it. And as ever, I will show you wherever I can in this video that one person can do the job. If it needs two people at any point, I will tell you exactly where you need a friend to help. Let's see what we get for our money. And I want to say, if you like what you see today, uh, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But well, we've got our all important instruction manual there. Looks like it comes with a full set of tools, which is great. You are, however, going to need a second spanner and a screwdriver too. Everything is clearly labelled, as far as I can see. I'm going to take everything out of that packaging so I've got easy access and put it in little piles. Leaflet saying if there's any problem with it, don't return it to where you bought it from, but call the manufacturer Hampton instead. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut all my packaging open, but I'm gonna keep the little labels next to them so I know exactly what I'm looking at when it comes to the instructions. Okay, got everything laid out. Okay, well, I've got everything out of the packaging. Uh, while it comes with the uh, wrench that you're gonna use on the, some of the bolts on here, you will need Cross, a cross-headed screwdriver as well. So I'm gonna use my electric one uh, for doing these up. I've also got a separate wrench on here, which uh, I've sized up, which actually fits some of these bolts, which just make it life a lot easier uh, than using one of these wrenches. So you might wanna do likewise. Anyway, diving straight into our instruction manual. We can see all the parts that we need there. They're all labeled very clearly on it. And here we've got the key bit that all of the parts are labeled on here. So you're gonna be able to know, so your small flat washer is cut, cut GG. So when you look and see GG on there, that's the one that you want. But I'll talk you through that as we go along. Anyway, let's unbox everything first of all. My first job is going to be to actually unbox everything, put it all out on the side, and then check it off against the list of parts to ensure that I've got absolutely everything I need and no parts are missing. Bench will do nicely for laying everything out on. Okay, well, I'm just going to carry on getting every and that's my bolt. And in comedy style, an extra set of fixings in the tube have fallen over the edge. And we've got another small part and some bolts that fell out of the packaging there. So do check everything very carefully. Check we haven't got anything else falling out of it. Oh, it's all very well protected with the uh, vinyl wrap over the top. Now that is one of our top plates in there. Now those look just like there was one to start with, but that's actually the center of the top and the three top plates that form the top of the heater. Word of warning at the start, there's something to pay attention and not miss at the end. This top panel and the three reflectors come with this blue film on both sides. You need to remove this because if not and you leave it on there, obviously you're going to have major issues because the heat is going to cause the plastic to melt onto your unit. So, and it is one of the most fiddly jobs out of the whole process to do, but I thought I'd highlight early on because it's something I don't want you to miss later on. Okay, we'll get that out, which I'm assuming is our burner, and this, which I'm assuming is our base, but I will double check everything on the instructions. And in here, we have indeed got one very carefully packed burner. Well, I'm quite impressed with the, well, I'm quite impressed with the quality of everything so far. The one thing I would say is make sure you peel all of this vinyl off before getting close to turning the heater on because it is purely on there for protection and you get your nice stainless steel underneath and the other thing is if this thing gets hot from the heat from the top you don't want any heat issues with this on board okay now with everything unboxed i would go through the checklist and make sure you've got everything because you don't want to be halfway through building the thing and find you've got a part missing because you want to find if you and if you do have a part missing you want to find hampton as opposed to where you bought it from we've got part a there which is reflector panel three reflector plates there Head assembly, which is part number C there. D, which is the cylinder housing for my gas bottle. E is the propane hose. F is the propane regulator down there. And we've got parts G and H on here, which are gonna to attach to the three support brackets on there. And we've got part J, which is the base right there. So we've got everything we need. So let's get to work, Richie. Okay, well, for the first part of the job, you're gonna need the ground fixings, which were in the, those things that fell out of the tube onto the side. They're absolutely vital because you turn the base over and then these fit on the outside. 
facing downwards, held in by two of these bolts. First thing to do is to remember you're building this kind of upside down, so you want the this ground fixing facing towards the top edge of what is going to be the bottom of the thing when it's upside down. You don't want it on like that. It has to look like that. The two bolts go through the outside. The washer and the nut go on the back of each bolt. So washer on first, like that. Finger tighten the nut on that. Do the same with the other. If you noticed I've separated everything up, I would do so to make life easier on your assembly. It will go faster as you go along. Washer on again, loosely spin the nut on there. Now at this stage, I'd hand, I'd spun, hand tighten them, it comes with one spanner. You are gonna need two, because if you try and turn this from the outside, the inside nut will just slip on there. But what I'm actually gonna do, so I can get more access to it, is go from this side, put my spanner on the outside, and tighten like that. It's just gonna be a bit easier than trying to do it with that bracket in the way. Hopefully getting a good camera angle on here for you. Okay, now I'm gonna do exactly the same with the other bolt. I will speed this up, but just so you can see what I'm doing on here. Okay, that's one on. Now I'm gonna rinse and repeat and do the other two. One of which goes on there, and one of which goes on there. Okay, well I've done exactly the same here. Separates all nuts. The main thing again is to remember this bit goes towards the top, not towards the bottom, like that. Now, I am going to come back to tightening that up, but what I'm going to do is to save time, I'm going to tighten them all up off of camera. Okay, well with all of my three ground fixings on there and tightened up, it's on to step two. And as I say, it should look like that with the fixings towards now towards the bottom, if that makes sense. Well, the next step is to fit the three base support units using the three M8 bolts, which are these large ones, support brackets, base assembly. There's just three of them, the obvious reason being there's just three holes that they go through in here. And these are the only ones you're gonna need the larger wrench for. Once again, loosely tighten them by hand. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same with the other two. Make sure they're going in, they should be going nice and easily. If they're not, back them off because they might be getting cross-threaded and you don't wanna tighten them if they're cross-threaded because you're gonna cause irreparable damage to either the bolt, the base, or both. Now you might be noticing, they're not kind of equidistant apart as from each other. You've got space on this side where I'm guessing our gas bottle is gonna slide in. Okay, that's our third one, hand tightened. The one thing I would say, it seems quite well made um, because the bolts are going in fairly easily, which is always a sign it's a reasonably good quality on here. Now I'm not I'm gonna leave them loose just for the second till I read the instructions. And indeed it does say, attach the support bracket loosely to the base at this stage. Now for step number three, we're gonna put connect the upper pole and the lower pole together, which is these two. And I'm assuming that that simply slots in, yeah, that's simply gonna slot into there. If you look, the end is recessed. That's gonna go into that end with the flange end facing down on there. Then we've got four screws to fit in there. So let's read the instructions as to what they are. And we're gonna use four KK, four screws, three sixteenths which are KK, but I'm gonna read the instructions to be on the safe side. Yeah, three of the screws. I would say at this stage, do as I say, not as I do. Initially, I was thinking it was four of these screws that were the, the part KK, the 3 16 ones. They're actually these 3 16 screws here. So it's these four because I tried putting one of these in and it was not wanting to play ball at all. I would say even if you've got a cordless drill, put them in a little way by hand to make sure, yeah, that uh, thread is not uh, crossed over on itself. Nothing on here so far that is troubling me that would need a lot of skill or more than one person to do. Now, use the cordless drill. Once you've hand tightened the screws, you can use a cordless drill to finish the job if you want to. Okay, we're moving on nicely through there. That is our upper pole G attached to the lower pole H. And there's also one thing, this label should be in line with this flat surface. So I'm gonna to need to undo these and turn it through 90 degrees to get the label facing in the correct direction. Okay, I'm just gonna rotate that round slightly. I don't think the label's actually on perfectly straight on there anyway. Hmm, and it's more in line now. Anyway, let me get my four screws back in. So now my label is facing that flat spot at the bottom. That's how it should be. So that is step three complete. It's coming on quite nicely. And for step four, we're gonna install the pole onto those three support brackets. And we're gonna to attach the pole to the support brackets using six M6 by 30 bolts. 
and six M6 flange nuts, fully tucked, which are those. So, and this is only six of those. Yeah, there we are. Six large bolts and flange nuts M6. So it is these six that we need. And now I need to put this back down onto the ground. Now, I would say, I like to give people handy tips as I go along. Take all the nuts and bolts apart and put them on the side. So when you're working on here, you can reach over with one hand to pick them up. You're not gonna be able to do that if they're still joined together. So now you should be able to see my logic. I can just reach for the nuts and the bolts without too much of a problem. Now, just need to figure out which of the two holes they marry up against. So they don't marry up against the outside two, it's the inner two holes, if you look at that on each in each instance. So let me put one bolt through on each of them to start with. And this is a job that, well, it can be done with one person. It might be easier with two, but as I'm about to prove, hopefully one person can do it. It would definitely be easier at this point with someone else putting the nut on from below because it would be very easy to drop it on the floor, but I've got them on the side there so we can reach for another one. Once we get two in, we should be, uh, to use the expression on my patio heater here, cooking with gas. Bit of wiggling and jiggling required at this point to get the bolts in. Now I can get access easier this time. So once you've got the first one in, it's going to be a lot easier getting the others in because you can hold one down like that. Ugh. Didn't undo the last one. So once again, do as I say, and not necessary as I do and undo all of the nuts and bolts. So with two in, it's holding itself up. And just wiggle and jiggle. Just remember, don't go for the outside hole there. It's the inside two holes you need marrying up. The easy mistake to make to put it in through the outer one at that stage. See, so the more I'm putting it together, the faster the job is becoming. And quite a bit of wiggling and juggling required to get this together. It's got all the remaining bolts in. Bolts. Now with all three bolts through there, I'm simply going to hand tighten all these nuts. Again, we can now go as tight as we like on them in terms of hand tightening them up on that. Might as well reduce the work you've got to do with your spanners. a reasonable camera angle for people there. It's always very tricky when filming stuff like this because you can get back and then find the camera angle looks terrible. But now you can see it beginning to take some shape. Now it's time to fully tighten all of the screws, both on the top and the three at the base there. Okay, now we're gonna go and tighten all of the bolts up. If you've got a spanner like this, it makes a world of difference because you can attack the bolts from the underneath and get a lot easier access than you can from the top where you've got this pillar in the way. Carry on tightening all of these up until everything is nice and tight. And I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, it's so all the top bolts tightened up. Just got the three at the base to do now. So don't forget to do those up. Now at this stage, you are gonna need the bigger spanner to tighten things up. But it's making that take a little bit of time because these things are quite awkward to use. But it's an essential part of the job because obviously this is gonna take all the weight right the way up through to the gas tower at the top. And spin them in as much as you can by hand. So you're minimizing the work you've got to do at the end. Okay, you can always do a wiggle and jiggle test to test that's nice and secure, but that step is complete. Just remember guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. So on to step five, which is to load the cylinder housing D down onto the pole. Hence the reason why I took all the uh, white protective stuff off, first of all. Okay, now when putting part D on and sliding it down, it makes no mention of where the hole should be on the, on the side, I guess, because the thing's round, you can just tilt the thing around. Lower that down. And my patio heater is beginning to take shape rapidly. Okay, now. Step six is to attach the three refractor spacers and three washers to the top of the head assembly. So for step six, we need three reflector spacers and three of the large washers, but now the, the head assembly. And this is the head assembly. This is where it gets slightly awkward because of the gas tube coming out of there. You can't lay it on its end to put the uh, head spacers in there. But we put a washer through. You spin them in by hand. I would suggest just to start with before Get them on by hand as far as they will go. Fairly straightforward again so far. So it does, as I say, it appears to be pretty well built. I've assembled other Hampton Bay products before. 
um, without any problem. Well, I will point out I've bought this patio heater myself. It's not sponsored by Hampton Bay, uh, although it would be nice if they would send me something uh, for the trouble. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna hold that down and tighten that up by hand. The one good thing being you can rotate it round to tighten them. Take most of the slack out by finger tightening them. Just want to make sure you're not scratching any of this nice stainless steel. Okay, that is our three reflector spacers installed in our head unit. So that is set six complete. Now you're going to unscrew the stainless steel bolts M6 by 10 from the head unit. Ah, that's the three around this little collar. which is located here. So that's these four bolts around here. And you're gonna find that that gas tube becomes really, really annoying. Now, this type of spanner is gonna be much easier to use one of these than it is that. But these are the ones, you're not unscrewing any of the screws up here, just these four bolts around the base. And once you've got those, bit loose are going to come out by hand put those safely to the side as uh, we don't know if we're going to need them or not but we don't want to lose them so we're just going to I'm just going to carry on working my way around and doing all four. Stop it driving you nuts by being pulled around by the gas bottle turn it upside down making sure you put it on the surface it's not going to scratch into it makes real life removing those bolts much much easier trust me as I was wanting to use some very child unfriendly language on them due to the gas pipe pulling the thing over to one side simply get them loose, spin them out by hand like that. So that is step seven complete. Now, insert the hose of the head assembly into the pole. Secure the head assembly to the pole with the stainless steel bolt. So we do need to keep those four. But it says note the control knob on the head assembly should be above the decal on the pole. So let's take a look at that. I see, so, okay. Now, at this stage, there's definitely going to be some wiggling and jiggling required. So we're setting that down the inside. This is where I could do with somebody filming it from across the yard. Okay, now I've slid my gas tube down the inside. What it means by the de by the control panel being above the decal on there, so you can read the instructions as to how to operate the panel on here. So it doesn't need to be twisted to the side or out the back like that. You want it on there so it's directly above the control panel. So time to put those four bolts back in. And again, just spin them in by hand to start with. With every one of these, you wanna make sure they're not cross-threaded because as I say, if you ever need to take it apart, if they're cross-threaded, you're not gonna be able to. And what I mean by cross-threaded, it's when the screw's in at an angle and you can't turn it properly. So you might be tempted to get the spanner on it and try and twist it but all you're doing is damaging the thread. And try and get them as tight and as far as you can by hand. Save the amount of effort that you've got to make using the uh, spanner. But as I say, so far, this job is a one person job. So it could be done by a single parent. Okay, all four bolts in, time to tighten them. If anybody wonders what the noise is in the background, that's my chickens. A great deal of interest when anyone is around. Okay, I think that's they're tight enough on there. So that's step eight complete. Oh, now on step number nine, it says, remove the protective cover before assembling the reflector. So yeah, there's a blue covering on there. Very, very easy indeed to have missed that. And it says, remove protective cover before assembly on there. Okay, now like the other protective film, you are gonna need some patience when removing this because it is stuck on very, very well indeed. Doesn't wanna peel off particularly easily. Well, it's quite cold today, but I guess on a warmer day, it might come off a little easier. And I have no idea how you're going to get it off this edge at all. Well, it turns out a bit of brute force and an awful lot of patience are needed to do that. Anyway, let me carry on removing that. Back with you in a second. Okay, well, I've got the, the film off the top. Might seem a bit of an issue, but you also want to get this bit off around the edge as much as you possibly can. Well, at this point, rather than bore people to death, I will just say you need to remove all this film and it's going to take you about 10 minutes. Well, that's the protective film off of that bit. It's a bit of a pig of a job to do, I will say. And I've got three more of them to do. Whilst it's a pig of a job to do, it's probably one of the most essential parts because if you didn't take this film off, and I should imagine a lot of people fail to read the instructions, don't take the film off. And then this plastic will make a heck of a mess 
of the top of the unit and supposed to stay this burning plastic I should think will probably stink anyway I'm gonna peel all the stuff all the blue off of this side all the stuff off the other side and then do the other two panels as well back in about 10 minutes well that's step nine finally complete but it's not the nicest of jobs to do just very time consuming okay we now need to slide two of the reflector panels together so for the putting the reflector panels together we now need the nine small washers these screws and the captive end nuts now it's like a richie woke moment we actually only need one screw and one nut on the inside on there because the next step is to put the top plate over and if you've already got the bolt in there you're not going to be able to put it through into here now this is where things might get interesting my language would normally get a bit more child unfriendly now i think we're going to pop that through there push that back up right hold it and i've got my other hand underneath holding that nut <laughs> yeah this is uh, going to require some patience i'm going to get the washer on and that's going to going to keep forcing that up so but still managed to do everything on my own so just hold that in the eye there finger tighten that now we're going to do the same with all of the other screws on the inside but we're not going to put them through there as yet we're going to go through this one Screw from beneath, washer on top, captive nut, spin that home. Great thing being about having this on something flat like this is at least you can turn it round. Careful not to put any of the big washers on by mistake, which is what I thought I'd done for a second there. Washer on the top, that over that. Now with those two reflectors loosely attached, I'm now ready to put the third one in place. Now. We can insert the remaining panel like that so it's completely flush looking on the inside you've not got any ridges showing on the inside if that makes sense on that a screw from the outside first of all that's gonna be the way to do it just hand loose to hand tighten them I'm gonna go for the inside one on here in fact in a minute I'm gonna go and put that one on there so it's wanting to fight me on the inside but I've had an idea as to how to stop it fighting me and that is if I can line this one up here it should help pull the rest into line and it has so for that third panel maybe put the middle bolt on first of all and can tighten that before trying to get these two in these two are now more in line this is probably the trickiest bit I've had to do so far Sorry for the camera angle on here, people. As I say, this is the trickiest part, I would say, so far of the whole job. And that Okay, finally, I've got them all finger tight. Time for the cordless screwdriver and tighten the nut to tighten them all up. So what I'm now gonna do is tighten the inside ones up, first of all. Put my spanner on there. Cordless driver. All being well, they're not gonna need much tightening. Just gonna walk round. Yeah. Well, I'll speed this section up as it's not the most interesting thing to watch, but hopefully you get the idea. Screwdriver from the top, nut driver from the bottom. Okay, that's all the inner ones done. Now, just the three outers to do. So this is a job where a hand screwdriver would probably be a little better than uh, an electric one which is maybe putting a bit too much pressure on don't need much tightening as you can see all I've got is the nut driver on the back there tightening there and that is finally part number 11 done okay support heater so for step 11 we're gonna need the three wing nuts and the six remaining large washers Rather than reading through the instructions on this, I will just tell you, you need the three wing nuts for step 12 and the remaining six washers. Far easier to explain this in practice. What we're gonna do is get three of the washers and put the cover on the top of there. Now you all understand my logic in putting all this up near the wall. Okay, so we're gonna put three washers on over the spacers. 
Now we're going to take our panel, line up the screws on the top. This is definitely, I'll be definitely going to need a bit of wiggling and jiggling. Let's see if we could see where they were from below would help. Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to put the three washers on the top and the three bolts, tighten the three bolts up on the top. Okay, now we can easily, you can see the advantage in being able to just stand up on the wall like this is just huge now. So if you're going to do the same job, build the thing up near a wall. Sorry, I probably should have said that at the start. Again, just check these aren't cross threaded They should just uh, spin up by hand. Get the third one on before I tighten them all up. Okay, now you can simply tighten them. Well, you cannot do anything more than finger tighten them. And that's my patio heater ready for a gas bottle. Now at this stage, I've got my gas bottle ready. What I will say is with a lot of these, it's better to loosen it just slightly because some of them are really, really stiff on there. The gas bottle, if I've got this right, is now, ah, it does slide up there, good. Okay, now, now our gas bottle regulator screws onto here. Now you wanna make sure, obviously, this is nice and tight, very tight. You don't wanna mechanically tighten it with anything, but at the same time, you definitely wanna tight so you're not getting any gas leaking. Okay, we can now turn the gas on, slide our tube down over the top. Now, read my instructions. That's turned off, high on this side, low on this side. Press the ignition. Yeah, I can hear the gas going through. Ooh, mama. Now a lot of these things, you need to hold this down until the thermostat cuts in there, enabling you to release it, and you can then adjust it down to low if you want, but that's now thumping the heat out of there. I would say I've turned it down to low on high. It is absolutely thumping out a huge amount of heat. As I say, 48,000 BTUs. You could virtually sit out here and it'd be snowing and that thing would keep you warm. But on low, that's plenty of heat enough. It was about 40 degrees first thing this morning. Guess we're up to about 50 now. So it's taking the chill out of the air quite nicely, even on low. So that is how you assemble a Hampton Bay patio heater from start to finish. If you like this video, you found it useful, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Me, I'm going in for a rest. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video, and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.